The following is a Dallin Catholic Sports presentation on Iowa Catholic Radio. Coverage of Dallin Catholic High School basketball is underwritten by Ashworth Vision Clinic, the Catholic Tuition Organization, Instruction Professionals, Dental Associates, Kemen, Mercy One, and Tamiya and Sons. Thank you for supporting Dallin Catholic basketball on Iowa Catholic Radio. 11.50 a.m., 88.5 f.m., 94.5 f.m., streaming at iowacatholicradio.com and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app. Chavez, now here's a steal by Dowling as Lincoln had the ball on offense and a layup good by Caitlin Clark. Steal and basket by Caitlin. And 5 nothing Dowling, and we're underway here in the first quarter. And immediately Lincoln having issues getting any kind of offense. And now yeah. another steal by Clark as with the basketball with Janae Winter, and a layup is good by Caitlin. 7 nothing Dowling to start. Classy move by Coach Meyer, as you mentioned in the pregame uh, introduction of the lineups with Aaron Kleppe, the only senior who didn't get a start on senior night. Yeah, the Maroons had so many seniors, you gotta you got to shuffle them to the next game. You like to try to start your seniors. A lot of coaches like to do that. And uh, for Dowling, they had six. And now another turnover by Lincoln. Lead pass by Clark down to McVeigh and over to Gipple, and her layup's good. Emma Gipple with her first basket, and it's 9 nothing Dowling as we're underway here in the first quarter at the Dowling Gym. The winner plays the winner of the Roosevelt and Sioux City East game going on right now in Sioux City, and we hope to have updates uh, from that game, maybe at halftime and in the postgame show. If the Maroons win this, Mark, would they have a home game or neutral they would, site? They play here Tuesday night. Okay. If they win. Yep. Uh, no, I knew it was Tuesday. I wasn't it's, sure the it's location. When the number one and two seeds get beat, that becomes interesting. Yep. And uh, hopefully that won't be the case in either way. But Southeast Polk, or rather uh, Sioux City East, hosting Des Moines Roosevelt. I know the Roosevelt team went up uh, right before the noon hour to travel to Sioux City. And uh, you never know. It could be a Roosevelt-Dowling matchup. Sioux City East ranked 15th in the final poll. Long three, no good from the left side. By the rails, that was Jada Taylor with the miss. Rebound comes out to Dowling. Lead pass from Runes. Lincoln not getting back, and a layup good by Gipple. Emma Gipple with her fourth point, and Dowling up to 11-0 lead here in the first quarter. Yeah, interesting to see how this will play out tonight because it appears to be super one-sided. Lincoln hasn't had a win this year, and uh, I don't know what, you know, if, if you're coaching a good team like the Maroons have, it's difficult to kind of call the kids off. And they're long three in the corner, no good by Jada Taylor for Lincoln. Ball scrambled around, and... Cleppy picks it up, rebound Dowling. And we can mention some of the other matchups going on. Uh, we're in Region 2 here, Lincoln and Dowling. The winner meets the Roosevelt Sioux City East winner uh, on Tuesday. As Backdoor cut there by uh, Gaber. And that was by Gaber, I believe. Yeah, backdoor cut by Gaber for a layup. So, And Gaber with her first two points, and it's 13 to nothing. And... So now here's a steal by McVeigh after the Maroons leading 13 to nothing. And now Clark in the front court for Dowling. Other regionals going on has Marshalltown at Johnston tonight. And the winner of that game will play the winner of Ankeny and Council Bluffs Lincoln. That's in Region 3. Now we've got a whistle and a foul on Des Moines Lincoln. And that will be on Janae Winter, her first. Other games has Fort Dodge at Waukee and Sioux City West at Ames. That's in Region 4. Linmar is at Southeast Polk tonight, and the winner of that game will play the winner of Iowa City West at Valley tonight. That's probably the key matchup. West coming over here, ranked 14th, taking on the 10th-ranked Valley team, and now the Dowling with the ball. Underneath is Clark, who shot up and good, draws the foul. The basket will count, and a foul on Lincoln. This will be on Saley Sims. Yeah, g- g- decent uh, decent crowd for an early Saturday evening game for the Maroons, but uh, not not super loud in their in their enthusiasm they feel a little bit bad i think for the lincoln girl and clark hits the free throw so she has 10 first half points or t- first quarter points i should say four and a half minutes remaining 16 nothing dowling over lincoln as caitlin clark converts the three-point play after the foul on lincoln saley sims rails with it this is uh, kira canada off the bench for the rails leaves it for T- jada taylor for three top of the key it's no good rebound gipple outlet pass goes to clark and the rails get back on offense. Uh, get Maroons, back on have, Maroons have chosen, I think, now to walk the ball up the court after a few early game layups. Dowling working their offense. An opportunity for six of eight teams to get in from the CIML to the state tournament. Now on the baseline, a shot with the left hand up and good by Aaron Kleppe. And the whole bench comes alive for Dowling, the senior. And Cataldo, or rather uh, Canada, with the foul for Lincoln and... Aaron Kleppe with her first basket. And for, substitution now for Dowling as McVeigh will check out. So will Gipple. 
And so will Gaber. Checking in will be Julia Moore for Dowling, along with Brianna Rodriguez. Uh, Meg Simplot. And Simplot. Just, yep, just checked in, too. the third one. Thank yep. you. Yep. Now free throw up and no good by Kleppe. Rebound tipped out of bounds. It'll be Lincoln basketball, and Nai Tong will enter the game for the first time tonight. And I gave up her starting spot, so Cleffy could start. And that's a nice gesture, and Aaron will step out. So Cleffy on the bench. 18 nothing Maroons. And if you joined us late, Lincoln dressing just six players tonight. They had two two other players that went out with an injury. And now in the lane, a shot no good by the Rails, but a whistle and a foul on Dowling as Janae Winter missing the shot. But a foul will be on Julia Moore. And it'll be the first Dowling fall foul of the night. See if the Rails players can get on the board here. Eyes the bucket and uh, Winter. Her free throw up and off the mark, no good. She'll get another. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic, Construction Professionals, Dental Associates, and Kemen. Alongside Steve Devaney, Mark Amadale from the Dowling Gym tonight. Girls 5A Regional, second free throw in and out, no good. Rebound Clark. So Winter misses them both. Rails looking for their first score. Clark. Down court, gets on the baseline. Moore for a shot up and good. Julia Moore with her first basket. And everybody scoring for the Maroons as Dowling out to a 20 to nothing lead. Now in transition, Lincoln, long three up, and it's no good by Canada. Kira misses a shot, rebound Dowling. Clark with it in the corner, goes to Moore. Head fake on the baseline, kicks it back out. A long three coming. It's up by Simplot, no good. Nai Tong with the rebound and put back up and good. Nai Tong and a timeout, Lincoln. 22 nothing is our score. Dowling with the lead over Lincoln, and we've got a 30-second timeout called by the rail splitters here. Steve Devaney, let's mention our sponsors tonight. They include Cath Tuition Organization, r and Realty Group, Two Rivers Glass and Door, and Mercy One. And don't forget, it's Saturday night. That means takeout night, right, in the uh, you know, Benny household? <laughs> to me and Sons. To me yeah, and yeah, Sons, yeah. 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 To me and Sons.net. You can order online or 515-282-7976. I mentioned earlier the regional matchups, and when I went through all these, Steve, there's an opportunity for six CIML teams to make the state tournament out of the eight regionals in Class 5A. Wasn't that similar last year, Mark? Didn't we have six, five or six? You could get five to six. Yeah. Uh, sometimes most have been around five, but yeah. now we could see six out of the eight being yeah. represented. Uh, well, there's obviously some good uh, other good teams around the state. Oh, there but, is. But the Maroons uh, in this CIML is, is just and, a, and how about yeah. last weekend where City High on the very final day of the, of the regular season goes over to uh, as a turnover on Lincoln as they inbound the ball. Dowling will have it as they go over to play Waukee. And Chris Gass and the Waukee Warriors, I think a, almost a 20-point win over City High. Yeah. That knocked them out of the number one spot, kept their undefeated. They were 20-0 going into the game. that kept their undefeated season from happening. They're now 20-1, and one, and now the third seed, if they move on to the state tournament, they will be the three seed, Waukee the one and Dowling the two. Okay. So interesting how that all transpired. I think I got that right. Here's yeah. Clark in the baseline. Her shot up and good. Caitlin Clark with another to me and Sons three-pointer. And, again, you can order 515-282-7976. Say hello to Mario, Joe, Joe Jr., and Louie at to me and Sons at 1501 Southeast First Street, just south of Principal Park in downtown Des Moines. So Caitlin Clark with her. Third three of the night. She's got 13 points. Now the ball is on the floor. Lincoln on the offensive end and a jump ball called. It'll be rail splitter basketball, and they'll throw it in. Good hustle both both sides there. Brianna Rodriguez and number 35 uh, Chavez there for the Lincoln hus- uh, hus- or Lincoln uh, Rails. In- inbound the ball. Jada Taylor gets it out to Saley Sims. On the right side it goes to Canada, who's in off the bench for the rails. Lincoln trying to set up their offense. Very young Lincoln team. Canada is a freshman. Winter's a freshman. Taylor, Umua, Sims, and Chavez, all sophomores. So you can almost say that's a, a JV2 type of team that Lincoln has in this for, dress for this game. And now reverse pass. Tipped out of bounds by Dowling's Meg Simplot. Great, good anticipation there as CC Umua, who's also a, a sophomore, checks in for Lincoln. And she'll replace Malasia Chavez. Looks like uh, looks like Ella McVeigh for the Maroons replacing Caitlin Clark as well. Oh, good. That is correct. As Dowling now jumps back into man to man with the basketball is Lincoln Taylor with it. They work the left side. Rail's going to be very methodical here. Minute 45 remaining in the first quarter. 
25 nothing Dowling. And now a shot in the lane, no good. Ball slapped around, safe from going out of bounds. Good hustle that time by Janae Winter. And now whistle and reach in foul on Dowling. I think it'll be on Moore. See if Julia yep. picks it up for Dowling. She does. That's her second. So a second team foul on Dowling and on Moore. That's her second. Three team fouls on Lincoln and a minute 30 remaining. Lincoln inbounds the ball. Underneath their own basket to the right. Now they get it up top to C.C. Amua. Right side it goes over to Winter. Janae lobs inside to Sims on the baseline. Turn around shot over Rodriguez. No good. Rebound Dowling. Can't buy one. They've had some good looks. They've had some open looks at times. Simplot dribbling in the front court to McVeigh. She'll open up for three. It's off the mark. No good. Fight for the rebound. Nai Tong takes it away. And then it's taken away from her by Lincoln. Good hustle that time by the rails as Janae Winter comes away with it. Under a minute remaining here in the first quarter. Again, the winner of this game plays Tuesday night against the winner from the other bracket, and that's Roosevelt playing at Sioux City East right now. We'll hope to have an update uh, throughout the evening on that contest. Mark, are most of the games uh, 5 o'clock early starts? All of them are tonight. Okay. Yep, that's kind of a, a change this year. Yep. Like one of the reasons is as a good hustle that time by Lincoln. Saving Very the ball with C.C. Amua. Very good hustle. Ball slapped around. Now steal by Dowling. Here's Simplot with it. Down court to McVeigh. 25 seconds remaining in the quarter. Dowling 25, Lincoln nothing. Rodriguez, she'll launch the three left wing, and it's good. Brianna Rodriguez with her first three of the night and her sixth of the year. And that's another to me and Sons three-pointer. 515-282-7976 to me and Sons. Dot net. You can order online tonight or as we approach, uh, well, the supper hour. Yep. Or is it the dinner hour oh, in the Devaney, Devaney household? Devaney, is it supper, dinner? What do you, what do you, you just say it's time to eat, right? <laughs> it is time to eat. <laughs> Turnover by Lincoln. My mom was a farm kid growing up, and they always called the, the lunch hour dinner. Dinner. And, and an evening the, meal would be supper. supper. But, yeah, uh, exactly. I'm more of a lunch and dinner person myself. Oh, half-court shot at the horn, and it rims out no good by McVeigh. And we have come to the end of the first quarter here at the Dowling Gym with the score. Dowling 28, Lincoln nothing. And we're back with the second quarter of this girls' Class 5, a regional semifinal round game from the Dowling Gym here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio's broadcast of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities is provided by Kemen, a global ingredient manufacturer using science to transform the quality of life for 80% of the world. Kemen is on the leading edge of molecular science, manufacturing more than 500 specialty ingredients for the human and animal health and nutrition, pet food, aquaculture, nutraceutical, food technologies, crop technologies, and textile industries. Kemen strives to sustainably transform the quality of life every day for 80% of the world with their products and services. Kemen, using science to transform the world. Online at Kemen.com. Thank you to Mercy One for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. From the cardiovascular experts at the Iowa Heart Center to the pediatric services of Mercy Children's Hospital and Clinics. Mercy provides complete care for Central Iowa's adults and children with more than 50 primary care and specialty clinics in the Des Moines area. Find a convenient Mercy One location near you. Online at mercydesmoines.org. And welcome back to the Dowling Gym. Mark Amadale alongside Steve Devinney as we start the second quarter, and it'll be Dowling basketball. The Bruins lead it 28 0 over Des Moines Lincoln. Yes, that score is correct, folks. Lincoln dressing six players tonight. They had a couple of ladies that uh, got injured and hurt today. One had a, a spleen injury, want to wish her a quick recovery, and the other one out with an injured ankle. And it just kind of went south for the rails as Dowling now drawing the foul in their first possession. And Lincoln's Janae Winter has picked up her second foul as we're underway here in the first quarter. And free throws coming for Emma Gippel, who had four points in the first quarter. And we're going to be uh, in making communication with some folks from uh, Sioux City tonight to uh, give you the update there. Sioux City East hosting Roosevelt. The winner of that game will play the winner of the Dowling-Lincoln game on Tuesday yeah, it'll be 7 o'clock on Tuesday tonight. It's an early start at 5. And now second free throw no good by Gipple. Rebound comes out to Lincoln. All the way down court. A shot no good. Now a steal by Lincoln as a ball went in the hands of Dowling. And a steal by Jada Taylor. And now the Maroons poke it away. They get the ball down court. Simplot with it. Her shot up and good as the Maroons got caught in a numbers game. Actually, Lincoln got caught in a numbers game. 
And it's 30 to nothing, Maroons. Rails in the front court. With it is CC Amua. Over to Jada Taylor. A couple of sophomores out there for Lincoln. Now uh, a step back shot from 15 is up and no good by Jada Taylor. And a rebound out to Dowling. Partially blocked, I think, by Caitlin there. I think she got a piece of it. Now a corner three up and good by Grace Gaber. That's a to me and Sons three-pointer by Grace. Her fifth point of the night. And it's 33 nothing Dowling. And this is going south even before halftime here, yeah, Mr. Devinny. As, as happy as you are for the... Uh, when Lincoln scores, they're going to get a standing ovation. Gosh darn it. Dribble or uh, travel there. As it happy is. as you are for the Maroons, it's just kind of tough to watch, right? I mean, it is. if you're a compassionate basketball person. But you have to play the game. Yep. And uh, you, you get to play 21 games to get to play your 22nd game. And yep. unfortunately for Lincoln, they are struggling tonight. They're in a 2-3 zone right now. Dowling with it. Simplot has it right wing. Three-point line extended. Won't shoot it. Gets in the corner. And this is Gipple for three. It's up off the rim. No good. Rebound Clark. Caitlin takes underneath and shoots and scores. Clark with a rebound basket. And it's 35-0 Dowling. And Clark with 15 points. Lincoln in the front court. This is Jada Taylor. She's guarded by Clark. Steal by Caitlin Clark. And down court and she draws the foul. Foul will be on Taylor and on Jada her first. And it'll be team foul number five on Lincoln with six minutes remaining here in the second quarter. Kind of run down some of the other matchups. We mentioned uh, in Region 3, Marshalltown is at Johnson tonight. These are all 5 o'clock starts. The winner of that game will play the winner between Ankeny and Council Bluffs Lincoln on Tuesday night. Clark misses her first free throw. She's one for two tonight. Other matchup in Region 4, Fort Dodge travels to number one, Waukee. Waukee the number one ranked team in Class 5A right now. The winner of that game on Tuesday night will, uh, will, will play Tuesday night against the winner of Sioux City West and Ames. That game going on in Ames tonight as Clark's second free throw is good. Caitlin with 16 points. Region 5 has Linmar and Marion at Southeast Polk. Winner of that game will play the winner of Iowa City West and Valley. West ranked 14th, Valley ranked 10th and that going on also tonight at five o'clock now a corner three is a steal by dowling by gabert's no good but she'll get three free throws and a whistle and a foul on lincoln and that'll Looks be like on a Jenae winter yeah, her third winter. winter really scrambled out to the three-point line in an effort to uh, try to block the shot or at least uh, get a hand up and she ended up running into gaber Region 6 matchup has Dubuque Senior at number 5, Cedar Falls. And the winner of that game will face the winner of Indianola, who's playing at Ankeny Centennial tonight. And those winners like again say, will meet on Tuesday. Uh, some good matchups. Was it last year, Mark, we were up at Cedar Falls? I yes, think, I think it was. for regional final. Yeah, and the girls really played well that they night. They did, yeah. playing well on the road. Uh, Dowling was the number 2 seed in their regional. Cedar Falls was the number 1 seed. Great win. And the final one that involves CIML teams, Region 7, Cedar Rapids, Jefferson, at West Waterloo, the winner of that game will face the winner of Ottumwa at Urbandale tonight. And that'll be, uh, that game we played on Tuesday. Uh, regionals, there's Region 1 and Region 8 do not have uh, CIML teams involved. As Gaber makes all three free throws, she has eight points here. What, what was the, uh, uh, looks the, like Lincoln's uh, going to take a full timeout. Mark. We will too, with yeah. the 547 remaining in the first half. 39 nothing Dowling over Lincoln, back in one minute on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Dowling Catholic Sports is provided by Two Rivers Glass and Door, creating commercial glass and aluminum storefronts. Also serving your home needs by creating custom frameless shower doors, mirrors, glass tabletops, and specialty glass. Two Rivers Glass and Door, design, fabrication, and installation. 515-222-4860. Online at tworiversglass.com. Two Rivers Glass and Door, serving imaginations since 1992. Thank you to Tumi and Sons for your support of Dowling Catholic High School basketball. Tumi and Sons is an Italian family restaurant with old country authentic Italian food. Enjoy the local atmosphere where you may even spot a priest, politician, or even Willie Farrell. Take advantage of Tumi and Sons bocce ball court with the kids while enjoying Tumi's homemade bread, pasta, and real Italian homemade desserts. Tumi and Sons is located on Southeast First Street, just south of downtown Des Moines, and around the corner from Graziano Brothers. 515-282-7976. Tumiandsons.net. And welcome back to the Dowling Gym. Mark Amadale, Steve Devinney tonight here in the Class 5A Girls Regional Postseason Tournament as Dowling hosting Des Moines Lincoln. It's 39 nothing 
Dowling over Lincoln. We've got about five minutes, 40 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Lincoln with the basketball, and now Clark forces a turnover as Taylor loses it. And a, and a basket by Clark as she stole the ball and got all the way down court and drew the foul. And Caitlin's shot will count. She's got 18 points and a foul on Lincoln. Tough one. You know, Caitlin, uh, against the best teams in the CIML, averages three or four steals a game. And so tonight, yeah. Lincoln team that's kind of struggled this year, to put it mildly. Uh, you know, Caitlin, if she gets up in that passing lane, okay. basically she can get one. You got an injury timeout here for Lincoln. Oh, that's all shoot. they need. Jada Taylor may have to check out with. Gosh uh, darn it! Looks like maybe she took an elbow or something to the to the to the mouth. Yeah, and looks like she's bleeding a little bit. Dowling trainer is going to get right on that. Del Ark not here. He's down at the wrestling tournament. As is yeah. Tom Wilson. We'll talk about that. It's free throw is good by Caitlin. She completes the traditional three point play and has 19 points. And it's Dowling 42 to nothing over Lincoln. The Rails are going to get a standing ovation once they score. Five and a half minutes remaining in the half. Lincoln with the basketball in the front court. With it is CC Amua. Dribble handoff goes to Canada, who's been very aggressive off the bench, but Kira, nothing to fall right now for Lincoln. Shaw Mark, uh, number 23, Winter, came back into the game with three fouls because, uh, of, because of the injury. Yep. And in the unlikely event that she would foul out, I think you can play with four, can't you? You can. You can play all four or three in basketball. It's okay. not like – I think it's uh, – baseball and softball, you can play with seven. Yeah. But if you go down to six, it's a forfeit. So okay. basketball, you, you, you only have one player. As long as you've got one player out there, you can play. And uh, hopefully that won't come that, no. that tonight. Cluffy sure back in the lineup not. for Dowling. And now pass from Clark. Gets it right back. Here's Gipple with it. Dowling leading 42 to nothing. Cleppy on the baseline, kicks it back out, and that is Moore for three. It's no good from the right baseline, right corner. Moore gets it back. Dowling saves it from going out of bounds. Moore with good hustle there. Now here's Clark in the lane. Pull-up jumper is no good. Rebound Dowling on the weak side, and put put back up and good by Emma Gipple, who is right around the basket. She's got six points. Yep. Gipp was in the right spot and out-battled a couple of the rails putter girls for that putback. Lincoln with 17 fouls here in the first half. Dowling with two. And oh now gosh. ball slapped around, and now a steal by Dowling and a layup by Clark. It was tip, tipped out of bounds or tipped by uh, Winter Moore. Took a, Winter took an elbow to the I forehead. So Clark, She's okay. She got back up. Clark with 21, and it's 46 nothing Dowling as the uh, route continues here at the Dowling Gym tonight. First round of the girls, 5A regionals. The winner plays the winner of Roosevelt. And Sioux City East going on right now. Now another steal by Dowling. Down court it goes to Gipple. She lets a defender pass and shoots and scores. Gipple from the right block with her eighth point. And Dowling now out to a 48-0 lead and a timeout Lincoln. And head coach Scott Harrison. And we'll see what uh, we get here. Scott Giles is our referee. And there'll be a 30-second break. Ben Applegate and Dan Clayton are other Officials, we want to welcome them tonight here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Our thanks also tonight to Ashworth Vision Clinic, Construction Professionals, Dental Associates, and Kemen. And our thanks also to our fine folks at r r Realty Group, Catholic Tuition Organization, Two Rivers Glass and Door, and Mercy One. We appreciate all their help and support throughout the year. Uh, I'm trying to look for an update here from Sioux City. Nothing right now. As it... As the five, all the 5 o'clock games, which is most of the state, will be going to halftime here shortly. Here it's Dowling 48, Lincoln nothing. Three and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Alongside Steve Devaney, Mark Amadeo, we want to thank Brady Grimm as our studio producer tonight. A little help from his friends, uh, the IT guys at Iowa Catholic Radio. Thanks for all they do. Had a great uh, turnout at Man Up today as the Iowa, uh, Iowa Catholic Men's Conference we all manned up. And now a steal by Dowling. Moore on down court, and her layup is up with the left hand good. Julia Moore with her first basket. And it's 50 to nothing Maroons with 250 remaining here in the second quarter from the Dowling Gym. Looks like Jada Taylor for the rail splitters is back on the bench. That's good. Hey, number 35 got him on the board. Chavez. That's the first basket. Good to see. For Malasia Chavez, Dowling in the lane. Cleppy shot up and no good. Oh, no, that's the fourth foul, I think, on uh, 
23 winter for the, or for the rail splitter. That came at the 235 mark, and we'll see what the uh, oh. referee says, and you're right. Janae Winter has just picked up her fourth foul for Lincoln with Gosh, two and a half minutes it. remaining in the half. So she's got to like, be uh, extra careful. It looks like uh, Jada Taylor, who got caught a little elbow to the mouth, is on the, in front of the scorer's table waiting to check back in, Mark. Here she comes. So Taylor will return to the lineup. That's good news. Dowling training staff getting her all attended to. And Kleppe misses them both. And a whistle and a foul on the... Looks like Brianna Rodriguez. Rodriguez picks up the foul for Dowling on the loose ball after the missed free throws by Kleppe. Aaron got the start tonight for Dowling. One of six seniors on this Dowling team. And Coach uh, Meyer started all five five of those six in their last game against Ames, which was our last broadcast, Steve. Yep. And then tonight, Aaron Kleppe gets the start ahead of uh, Nai Tong. Did Coach O'Hare go easy on you up there in Ames? No. <laughs> it was brutal. And I, and I had and that was a full from six. We went on the I air know. at six all the way to about 930. Then we get done, and uh, Hickory Park's not open. So that, that just made my night. Three, three and a half hours. You see who our, our yeah. scorekeeper is tonight. Or the guy well, that's running, running the, the board clock, yeah. clock uh, is uh, Mr. Kevin O'Hare, the, the one the and only. The mentioned. Uh, coach Vandera yeah. is the uh, official scorekeeper tonight. They brought nice. up the freshman coach, nice. JV2 coach here at Dowling. Yeah. They bypassed Tom Donahue. There's a reason for that. Well, <laughs> I don't know if Tom can figure out which buttons to push. Well, that, that was one of the issues. That's not the one I had in mind. Corner three up and no good by McVeigh, but Nye Tong there for the offensive board. And put back good. Nye with four points off the bench. 52-2 to two Dowling. And now a long three by Lincoln. Up and good. The first one of the night. Kira Canada. A three-pointer. Nice to see. Absolutely. 52-5 to five Dowling. And now the Maroons the other way. A three-pointer up and no good. But the put back up and good. Is that Gipple on the weak side no, or Simplot? No, it, it was Simplot. It yeah. was. Maddie Wishman just checked in and she missed the three. But Simplot was in the right spot. Simplot, uh, I don't know if Wishman gets the assist on something like that, but Simplot with the uh, basket on the rebound, and now Lincoln the other way, a long three. It's no good, but fighting for the rebound in there for Lincoln was Chavez after the missed three by Jada Taylor. So it'll be give, Dowling uh, basketball yeah, to bounce. Give the rail splitter girls credit. They're undermanned, and they're in that 2-3 zone because they had a decided height disadvantage. No question about that. And they're still battling. And now missed shot by Dowling, rebounded by the Maroons. They keep the possession alive. And this is Maddie Wishman in the lane. Her shot up and no good, draws the foul. This will be on C.C. Amua. And on Amua. That's her first. Her first foul. Team foul number nine on the rails with 51 seconds remaining in the half. Uh, Besides uh, Winter, who went to the bench with four fouls, no other rail splitter girl has more than two. So that's encouraging, at least for their numbers. First free throw is good by Maddie Wishman. Wishman makes them both. She's four for four on the season at the free throw line. Pretty good numbers there. I would say that's a pretty good percentage. Dowling by 51. It's 56 to 5 Maroons. 45 seconds remaining. Now McVeigh is steal. Took it away from Taylor. Down court, two on two. And they worked a fast break to perfection. Simplot trailing with her and shoots and scores. And she has her six point, 58 to 5 Dowling. Runs by 53 in the final 25 seconds of the half. Chavez with it. Faces the basket on the right side, guarded by Nighton. Now the ball poked away by Rodriguez in the hands of McVeigh. Down court to Simplot, and her pull-up jumper off the glass, good. Meg Simplot with her eighth point. And it's 60-5 to five Dowling. And we're not quite at halftime. Rails with a long three at the horn. No good. And we've come to the end of the first half with the score. Dowling 60 and Des Moines Lincoln 5 alongside C. Devaney. I'm Mark Amadale. We'll keep it here for a moment while we kind of recap the first half. But uh, Steve Devaney, postseason basketball number one. It's hard to believe we're this far into the season. Uh, didn't we just have yeah. Dowling Lincoln back in November right after the state championship game? Yeah. With the lights? Remember that game? The lights oh, went out. Yeah. You and I were on our... Cell phone flashlights yeah. trying to get out of there. Well, that was a first. You know, uh, <laughs> there was a car accident outside the, the Lincoln High School facility. Yep. Knocked down the transformer, and the, all yep. the lights at Lincoln were out. And so 
that was about midway through the first, first or second quarter, rather. And I, as I recall, the Maroons were up 35 to four, I think, and they stuck a fork in it because the lights weren't, weren't going to come back on. So, so then we get finished. there last Tuesday night, and we go up and sit up for the Dowling Lincoln Boys game, and uh, the uh, one of the administrators for. Uh, Des Moines Lincoln, Roberta Nigro. I see her again. I says, "Hey, we're real good. We got the power good." He says, "Oh my goodness! After you guys left, you probably more than ten minutes. The lights came back on. They rerouted wow. the circuit. So that's but, incredible. Uh, but the Maroons came back and and played that game. We, we were yeah. kind of kidding about it against Ames. They came back on. Uh, that was originally scheduled for Tuesday, November twenty sixth. Mm-hmm. Maroons came back on Saturday, uh, December fourteenth, and completed the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, winning over Des Moines Lincoln back then, I think the, and then tonight's the third time they've met. So they've had three dates with uh, two games. <laughs> yeah, so be interesting to see here with the running clock in the second half what the uh, what approach the Maroons will take. You know, I uh, you know you, you you hate to see it to be too one sided. So maybe the Maroons will walk it up the floor. I'm not sure what will happen, but uh, this, this a, is ugly. You're going to see a lot of those young ladies that are uh, numbers eight through fifteen yep. playing a lot. In the yep. second half. We're going to yep. take a break here on the uh, halftime show. It's halftime here at the Dowling Gym. It's Dowling 60 and Des Moines Lincoln 5. Yes, it's girls regional class 5A basketball. We hope to have an update from Sioux City. We'll get you that score because the winner of this game will play Tuesday night against the winner of Sioux City East and Des Moines Roosevelt. That game currently going on in Sioux City. We'll try to get an update when we return after this one-minute break here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Howdy, folks. This is Jimmy Aiken from Catholic Answers Live, and it's very important that you support your local radio station because it's only your local Catholic radio station that makes it possible for you to hear wonderful programming like Catholic Answers Live and all of the other great EWTN shows. So please help them out right now and be generous. You can give securely online at iowacatholicradio.com, the Iowa Catholic Radio app, or call 515-223-1150. Do you have a story? Well, God wants to hear it. Maybe you can't donate money or volunteer your time, but that doesn't mean that you can't evangelize for the Lord. Iowa Catholic Radio is on a mission of evangelization, and you can help by sharing your testimony with us. Just call 515-223-1150 and tell us how Iowa Catholic Radio has impacted your life. Or you can also email your testimony to contact at kwky.com. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym alongside Steve Devinney. I'm Mark Amadale. Our halftime score is Dowling 60 and Des Moines Lincoln 5. And, uh, Steve, we do have an update from Sioux City. I finally found it here. Drum roll, please. Yeah. yeah. Sioux City East leads Des Moines Roosevelt 29-26 at halftime. So Good ball game. Uh, Roosevelt trailing by three right now at halftime. And uh, that would set up a rematch if Roosevelt should pull that out in Sioux City, a rematch on a Tuesday night to right to go to state, Dowling and Roosevelt. If it's Dowling and Sioux City East, well, those two teams haven't met in a long time that I can recall, if, yeah. if any. So, uh, But we'll have the game Tuesday night if everything works out. You mentioned the running clock with the Maroons leading thir- by over 35 points here at halftime. There will be a running clock, and uh, that second half should go pretty quick, I would guess. And uh, the thing about these tournament games, there's no band. There's really, right, you know, right. it's, it's kind of, we see this in football. We yeah. see this in all sports. It's like yeah. the tournaments don't have a whole lot of action like we see during the regular season. where We get the bands out at senior yeah. night and everybody's here. Yeah. And tonight's a little bit different, a little bit more laid back. More, more kind of like your style, Steve. You know, well, laid back and don't get too high, it, don't get too low. There's nothing you can do about some of those rules. And you, and you have the game starting at 5 o'clock on a Saturday evening. That's so true. It's a little bit tougher, but I would think that uh, – now, on the girls' side, I always get this confused. Do they call the girls' games regional finals? Yes, girls are regional. As opposed to Boys sub-state. are sub-state and yeah. the boys' side. That's yeah. just terminology that they yeah. use. That is correct. So, anyhow, regional final this coming Tuesday. It looks like a, a fairly sure thing that the Maroons will be represented and then uh, find out their opponent here in the next uh, in the next uh, hour or two when that game up in Sioux City comes to a close. That but, is uh, true. That's uh, Roosevelt girls, we saw them uh, about mid-year. Mm-hmm. We were on the radio over at... Uh, before Christmas, I think. That's right. We were courtside over there at Roosevelt. Yeah. And I thought that the Roosevelt girls showed some energy and some effort. Uh, they're much improved. I mean, they played well that night, even though the Maroons won the game. Dowling winning. That was back on December 10th. The Maroons uh, winning on that Tuesday night, 79-64. Yeah. So a 15-point win. But it uh, it was interesting at times. I think Roosevelt got it down to single digits yeah. several times before Dowling uh, 
ended up pulling that yeah. out. As I recall, now the Maroons weren't playing quite as well then as they have the second semester, but mm-hmm. it was not an easy game. You know, I mean, uh, Roosevelt gave, gave them all that they wanted for a large part of that game. Again, it's halftime here at the Dowling Gym. Maroons lead it 60-5 to over Des Moines-Lincoln. If you joined us late, Des Moines-Lincoln dressing six players tonight as they had a couple of gals that uh, got injured here in the last uh, 24 hours and could not play, and a couple others, uh, uh, for whatever reason, did not make the trip. So they're playing with their six, and those are the ones that are going to finish out the season for Des Moines-Lincoln, who are, comes in with a record of 0-21, Dowling's record 18-3. And the Maroons uh, got bumped down to third in the uh, rankings. And, Steve, I, I wanted to make sure we got that correct. As uh, if the uh, state tournament was seeded right now, Waukee would have the number one seed. Iowa City High would have the number two seed. Dowling would be the third seed, and Johnson would be the fourth seed. So Johnson and Waukee would be in the same bracket, and City High and Dowling would be in the other bracket if that were to be done. And that's how the girls' union does it. They do yeah. it by rankings. That is their true RPI, and then they uh, they take care of that all year, and that's pretty simple. And uh, that's how it would shake out. But uh, let's go yeah. through the, let's go through them real quick. Waukee is number one. City High at number two. Dowling third. Johnson four. Cedar Falls comes in at number five. Six two ten has Waterloo West, Southeast Polk, Davenport North, Cedar Rapids Prairie, and the Valley Tigers at number ten. The defending state champs in Class Five A girls, Tigers at number ten. They were out of the rankings most of the year. Eleven through fifteen has Aikney Centennial, Urbandale Ames, Iowa City West, and Council Bluffs A. Lincoln. So that's your top fifteen in girls yeah. basketball. Yeah, there have really been uh, the CIML continues every year in the last five or six years specifically to be so well balanced and so many uh, so many teams you got Waukee Dowling Johnston Southeast Polk and Valley so you got five out of the top ten uh, CIML Mm -hmm. and uh, throw in Centennial Ames Urbandale so you got three eight out of the top 15 are right here in the conference and potentially six out of those eight regions could be represented by a CIML team keep in mind that uh, Des Moines Hoover who got knocked out in the first round, and Mason City went to Class 4A this year for uh, postseason. And by the way, Des Moines, or rather Mason City, uh, tonight, they are uh, hosting Spencer in Mason City. They also had a 5 o'clock start. And the winner of that game will face the winner, number four, Ballard of Huxley and Boone. Ballard the favorite there. So you can see a Ballard-Mason City regional final in uh, in Huxley on Tuesday night, Steve. Yeah, Ballard has a good, rich history going back. Yes, they uh, do. 10, 12 years probably um, with some very, very good. They, they've probably had, gosh, four or five Division One kids come out of there and just a well-run program. And those are kids that play year-round up there typically for the All-Iowa Tech and Ames. Let's take a look at our scoring here at halftime. For Lincoln, they had a basket by Kira Canada, a three-point basket. And the first basket was scored by Malasia Chavez, at the 235 mark of the second quarter, it was a shutout until then for Dowling. So that's the uh, Rails' only baskets tonight, and they are 0 for 2 at the free throw line in the first half. Is Lincoln for Dowling Catholic? The Maroons are led by Caitlin Clark. She has 21 first half points, uh, followed in scoring for the Maroons. Uh, eight points for Grace Gaber, Emma Gipple with eight points, and off the bench Meg Simplot with eight points to lead Dowling. Four points for Nye Tong, who came off the bench tonight. Aaron Kleppe got the start at center. And then three points for Rihanna Rodriguez. Two points for Maddie Wishman. And two points for Aaron Kleppe. As the Maroons lead it 60-5 to here at halftime. Dowling jumped out to a 28-0 lead at the end of the first quarter and outscored Lincoln 32-5 to in that second quarter and lead it 60-5 to at halftime. We'll take a break along with Steve Devaney, Mark Hamadale. Back with the second half in one minute on Iowa Catholic Radio. Provided in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic with two licensed optometrists, Barbara Sheets, a Dowling Catholic graduate, and Dr. Todd Pedig, the Ashworth Vision Clinic team provides complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and pre- and post-operative care. Ashworth Vision Clinic is located at Ashworth and 60th Street in West Des Moines, 515-440-4610, online at ashworthvision.com. 
The Catholic Tuition Organization provides the best tax savings over any other charitable giving in the state. 65% of your contribution directly reduces your Iowa income tax liability. Plus, there are still federal deductibility options to further save on taxes. Find details online, ctoiowa.org. All this for the kids and their future. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym underway in the second half. And Lincoln with the first possession and a steal and basket by Emma Gipple. Gipple with her 10th point. And Dowling's lead now 62-5 to alongside Steve Devaney, Mark Amadale. Brady Grimm is our studio producer on this Saturday night as we got started early. Uh, 5 o'clock starts all the way around in Class 5A tonight uh, with girls' regional semifinal basketball. The regional finals are Tuesday night. And the Maroons with the lead here, 62-5. to Now our first foul of the second half on Dowling's Ella McVeigh, and that'll be her first foul of the night. And we mentioned uh, the Maroons scoring. They all, Dowling was 8-14 of 14 at the free throw line in the first half. Lincoln 0-2, for 2, and I believe 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 players scored for Dowling in that first half, Steve. Yeah, the starters are back in here, Mark, to start the third quarter, but uh, I would guess they probably don't play any more than three or four minutes. Now, here's a shot that's blocked by uh, Dowling as McVeigh blocks Canada's shot, and Maroons get the rebound. It's ball deflected out. Now, here's McVeigh on the pass from Clark back over to Gaber, left side. Now to McVeigh, corner three, left wing, up, off the mark, no good, left it short, and a rebound out to Lincoln and Jada Taylor. Down court it goes to Canada. Kara with a pull up jumper, and it's no good, and it'll be out of bounds to Dowling. Good hustle there by number 33. Sims for Lincoln, but she couldn't save it. And so uh, Maroons will have it going back the other way. Got a request on my uh, super hotline. It's a corner three up and good by Grace Gaber. Gaber with her 11th point. That's a Tamiya and Sons three-pointer from the left corner. 65-5. to five. Dowling with a 60-point lead here in the second half. Uh, Mr. Donahue is listening. Okay. And he says, hey, you know, since you... Since you passed the JV coach, we were talking about his scorekeeping abilities. And now a steal by Dowling. Clark with a pass to Tong, and Nye's layup is good. She's got six points. Since we passed uh, Tom Donahue, the longtime, been here 60 years coaching, I believe, something like that. And we didn't think he was on the uh, the depth chart for running the scoreboard tonight, Kevin O'Hare. <laughs> the, and he took offense to that. And I'm, just, well. I'm just telling you, you can read this. And uh, he said he thought those buttons were confusing at the scorer's table. <laughs> And he just didn't want anything to do with it. But he Tom's the first ballot Hall of Famer. He, I'm sure he'll and, be fine. And he kind of hopes that we compliment him. Corner three up and good as Dowling now taking advantage of another Lincoln turnover. Shoots and scores, and it's McVeigh for three. And Ella with her first to me in Sun Street pointer tonight. And it's 70 to 5 Dowling. But I would sure hope the Maroons will have like a five pass rule or a six pass rule. I, I hope they start walking the ball up the floor. This is getting. Uh, more yeah. than out of hand, yeah. 70 to 5. Well, last year, Des Moines Lincoln drew Waukee and got beat 83 15 in the first round. Yeah. This year, they drew the number three ranked team, Dowling, and right now it's 70 to 5. And we got four and a half minutes remaining here in the third quarter. And now a turnover by Lincoln. Now a nice pass by Clark underneath the Nye Tong, and she was left unguarded. And shoots and scores. Eight points for Nye Tom. But he said, you know, if we're going to pick on the JV coach, we got to talk a little bit about the, and compliment the JV girls and the ones that I've obviously Tom coached. So well, absolutely. I'll let you start with that. Well, no, I, right mean, I, I, I didn't see every one of Coach's games. But I was as I was up here getting ready to do uh, as Nye Tong scores a layup off of a good yeah. assist by yep. Caitlin. Yeah, another steal by Dowling. Clark, a nice pass down court and a layup good by Nye Tong. She's got 10. Long three by Lincoln. It's no good by Canada. Kira couldn't hit it. Rebound comes out to Dowling. And now the Maroons underneath. Gave her a pass to Nye Tong. Layup good and a timeout Dowling. They're going to clear the bench. 12 points for Nye Tong. And this is just substitution timeout with 3.56 remaining. But, yeah, uh, you know, Tom's got some kids. He's got the next group that's coming through. And some of them are going to be playing here. I, I, I really like Olivia Bailey, 5'11 junior, tall, lanky. And you're going to see a lot of these kids play a lot now because next year with Caitlin Clark going on to the University of Iowa, a lot of these kids are going to get some reps, and we're going to see a lot of them tonight here in the final uh, uh, moments here of the third quarter and the fourth quarter, I believe. Uh, yeah. No, you've got uh, six seniors graduating this year, and uh, 
so back to Coach Donahue. So we, we were getting set up for radio several times, and Coach Donahue was down here. Mm-hmm. A couple times it turned into kind of a rain delay with, with Coach Donahue. We couldn't get that game started on time. Let me, let me block his number before you really get into this because he's just lambasting me right now. <laughs> he, he, he's fit Okay, his number's tied. blocked, so don't yeah, worry about it. Go yeah. ahead. No, 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 but I just think <laughs> Coach Donahue showed a little frustration this year. Now, the former Mr. Donahue, the first Hall of Famer, was his father, Mick. 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 And, and as Tom gets up there in age, Tom, you know, we're all getting older. Tom r- reminds me a little bit more of Mick each and every year, Mark. But back to basketball. Winter with a deep three. Off the glass, Lincoln. good. 76-8, to eight, Dallin the other way. And now we've got new Maroons out there. So we're going to table the Tom Donahue discussion. We'll yes. wait for a, a 30-second timeout or something. Dallin with a uh, shot at no good. Maroons keep the possession alive. Now a corner three up and no good. Rebound, Kleppi, Aaron Kleppi back in there. Brianna Rodriguez now in there for Dallin. Rodriguez, a head fake underneath the Kleppi layup. Good! Rodriguez with the assist and Kleppi with the basket. And for Aaron, that is her fourth point. Unselfish there by uh, Rodriguez. Nice play. Big Simplot in there for Dowling. A long three by Lincoln. It's no good off the mark by Canada to rebound Dowling. Maroons with a run out. Down court to Simplot. Layup is good. Meg Simplot with her tenth point. Becomes the third Dowling player in double figures. 80 to 8. Maroons with under three minutes remaining in the third quarter. Running clock. Clock will only stop for free throws or timeouts. Now Lincoln with the ball. Shot partially blocked by Rodriguez. We got a whistle and a foul called on Moore and on Julia. I believe that'll be her third foul. Yeah, the shot. Th- yeah, the shot was blocked, but uh, Jada Taylor was Johnny on the spot and uh, took it two free throws. And the first one is up and no good. So, anyway, the that roster I gave you, any of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, okay. We're talking about the JV kids. I mean, yeah. that's, that's, that was my instructions from Coach Donahue is talk about some well, of the Well, a lot players. of those some kids of the, are, some of them are, are with us here. tonight. Yep. So, we're, we're – Wishman's see, here and you see Friedrich, Friedrich is second. here. And, and uh, Julian Moore is here. Olivia Bailey's here. Yep. We see Frer- a lot of them. Frerichs is here. And now, yep. corner three, up and good by – Meg Simplot with another to me and Sons corner three. That's her first of the night, and she's got 13 points, 83 to eight. Dowling with the lead over Lincoln. Now Lincoln with the shot in the lane. It's no good by Jada Taylor, and a rebound out to Dowling. Here's Moore with it. Julia down court leaves it for Simplot, gets it out to Wishman for three. It's off the back iron, no good. Rebound Lincoln and CC Amua. Winter just barely escaped her fifth foul. She kind of bumped the shooter as she was going up, but no call. Two minutes remaining here in the third quarter. 83-8, to eight, Dowling, a long three coming. It's no good by Lincoln. Winners miss. Rebound Dowling. Moore all the way down court and puts up a shot. It's no good. And a foul on Canada of Lincoln and Moore to the free throw line for Dowling. Even though we have a running clock, Mark, as you know, some of the listeners may not know, There's uh, the clock does stop on fouls and timeouts. Stops on uh, free throws. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. On free throws, throws yeah. and, and timeouts. If the ball goes out of bounds or it's an inbounds play underneath, it keeps running. Yep. More of the left-handed free thrower. First one up and good. Julia, a 25% free throw shooter on the season. Yeah, 25%. I wonder if Coach Donahue wants me wants to take credit for that. <laughs> we got to be nice to Coach Donahue. No, we don't. And I no, mean, he's, don't. he's a Hall of Famer. He's, he's a Hall of Famer, yeah. He, he had a streak. Now, when, when uh, Brian Morris used to do color with me, we had, and, and Brian was keeping track of this more than I would, is yeah. Moore's free throw is no good. There's another Tom Donahue coach free throw. Oh, missed. Boy. And uh, rebound Dowling. The Maroons keep it. Here's Kleppy for three. It's no good. Rebound Lincoln and CC Amua. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm kidding. He had like 60. He had a Jim Williams streak going like he did in football, you know, 70-some straight. He had like 60-some straight wins. Ouch. And then all then things went south for a while, and. He came out, and now he starts talking. He just started talking to us this year after that all went. So that's kind of the history with Tom well, Donahue. Well, it's because he's not angry at me. Well, no, because you don't come in till game time. And, that's a good and you're you don't you don't keep the scorebook unless you need to for the boys. Yeah. That that bought you some time, but I got to put up with the guy. I know. I, mean, I, I yeah. can't even get set. He'll, he'll interrupt the game out of a timeout and yell at me. So yeah. No, I get it. But we love Tom. Donahue family, Miss Mick. Oh. And uh, now Lincoln with the shot, it's no good off the guy wire. Yep. I've said that too often this year. The guy yep. wire here at Dowling, that's way off. And Dowling with the, the ball. 45 seconds remaining in the half, or in the third quarter, excuse me, 84 to 8. 
Dowling and now Moore. Catch and shoot, corner three, up and good from the right side. To be in sense, three-pointer for Julia Moore. They lost track of her, the Lincoln girls, and she was wide open here on the right wing. Moore with eight points. That's her seventh three in a varsity game this year. We, Coach Donahue didn't give me those JV stats, so I can't Im- Im- put those in there. And now on the baseline, Lincoln with the shot. No good by Jada Taylor from 15 feet out right side. Rebound Dowling. Runs in transition. Moore for three. Or Brianna Rodriguez for three, and it's good. So Brianna Rodriguez with her second three of the night. A me and Sons three-pointer. She has six points. Her six point, six three of the year. It's 90 to 8, and we've come to the end of the third quarter with the score Dowling 90 and Des Moines Lincoln 8. Along with Steve Devaney, I'm Mark Hamadale. Brady Quint, Brady Grimm is our studio producer. Back in one minute on Iowa Catholic Radio. Thank you, construction professionals, for underwriting our show, Man Up. Heard Mondays at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Construction professionals have been long supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio, and we've seen their work. It's beautiful. They do remodeling or new construction that is innovative functional, and designing what you want. It's a family business built on a strong foundation to create a new or remodeled home that is uniquely yours. cpcustomhomes.com. From our family to yours, God bless. Thank you, construction professionals. Thank you, Dental Associates, for underwriting Dowling Catholic Sports 365. With over 40 years' experience, Dental Associates is a group dental practice with the mission of promoting optimum health and well-being to all patients, providing preventative, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry for the entire family. Message underwritten by Dr. Kenton Gleichman, Dr. Steve Karbaka, Dr. Christine Mulcahy, and Dr. Ben Nagel. Dental Associates, addressing your smile, needs, and dreams. Online at Des Moines-DentalAssociates.com. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym. Fourth quarter, just to get about ready to get started. Dowling 90 and Des Moines Lincoln 8. Alongside Steve Devaney, I'm Mark Amadale. Dowling girls will advance to Tuesday night, taking on the winner of Des Moines Roosevelt and Sioux City East winner. And that game going on in Sioux City. We'll get you an update. Dowling with the ball to start the fourth quarter. Lexi Bowles, a rebound in basket. Her first two points tonight. Lexi, a 6'1 junior for the Maroons, come in, came in with a team high 15 blocks, but I think Clark overtook her with a couple of blocks tonight. Now a foul in the backcourt on Lincoln as the Rails fouls on Kara Canada, her third, and team foul number two on Lincoln. Dowling with two team fouls. Let's take a look at the Dowling lineup right now. Allie Anderson, number 25 in the lineup, along with Olivia Bailey. Also, uh, Lauren Frerichs, the ninth grader. Lexi Bowles in there. You mentioned Frerichs. Now a corner three up and off the back iron, off the mark. No good by Lauren Frerichs. And the rebound, Dowling. They get the weak side rebound. And now Bailey for three. It's no good from the right side. Bowles with the rebound. Her shot no good. Put back up and good by Lexi Bowles. So four consecutive points for Lexi. And it's 94-8, to eight, Dowling. She's got a really, really... Big height advantage over the Lincoln girls. Of course, uh, now I'm getting corrected by uh, Mr. Donahue. He said uh, Julia Moore did not play any JV ball for him this year, so uh, I can't uh, put the shooting. No, exactly. Uh, on Tom, I and, told and you. I will apologize. I on told air for you that. to stop picking on Tommy. Well, I'm just seeing if he's still awake. You know, it is getting close to six o'clock, and <laughs> you just never know. Here's Bulls underneath for the Maroons. Her shot no good. And the rebound slapped around, and Lincoln trail tracks it down. Janae Winter has it. Good hustle by the Maroon or the uh, Rails. But again, I wasn't provided any uh, stats or roster or anything from Coach Donahue. So, you know, she's listed on his roster. Says yep. JV one, and got about 15 players on there. As Lincoln shot is no good. Rebound, Dowling. Now a corner three by the Maroons up off the back iron. No good by Lauren Frerichs. Rebound, Dowling. Frerichs now in the lane again. As Bulls got the rebound, no good. Three-pointer by Friedrich is no good by Dowling, who's in there. Rebound tracked down by Bailey at half court. Corner three up by Allie Anderson, no good. Bulls with the rebound, and she feeds the corner. Now to Bailey at the, the free throw line. Bailey in the lane, shot is blocked, but a foul called on Jada Taylor. And on Taylor, that is her third. Looks like Lexi Bull has decided not to shoot any putbacks. And to try to get her teammates involved, which is kind of nice to see. She did. And now Bailey will go to the free throw line. Olivia's first free throw, no good. That's her first 
free throw attempt of the night. And uh, C.C. Amua checking in for Lincoln as Janae Winter will check out. Winter picked up her fourth foul in the second quarter. She's been been able to hang on since. Bailey's second free throw is good. It's 95 to 10. Dowling. His lead is swelled to 85 tonight. Now three pointer is blocked. Chavez's shot blocked by Dowling and down court and layup good by Lauren Fredericks. Her first two points. Continuous clock, 5.05 remaining, and now Lincoln Chavez, a shot off the glass. It's no good. And rebound comes out to Lincoln. That's Taylor with it. Now in the lane to Sims, and her shot is no good. Partially blocked. Rebound Dowling, and the Maroons in the front court with Allie Anderson running the point. It's uh, Friedrich, Anderson, Bailey, Frericks, and Bowles, the five on the floor for Dowling. With four and a half minutes remaining. And getting loose, a shot by Frericks is good. So she's got back-to-back baskets here on consecutive possessions, 99-10 to Maroons. She's played well at times, Mark, when they've given her the opportunity. Seems to have some decent athleticism. Lincoln with the basketball. They go right to left towards the south basket here at the Dowling Gym. At the free throw line is Chavez. Puts up her dribble, puts up a shot off balance. No good. Rebound Dowling and Olivia Bailey. Bailey threw it at Bowles, who wasn't looking. Now Frericks will launch the three, and it's no good. Missed everything. Rebound out to Jada Taylor. Good box out by the rails, and here come them for a rare opportunity on a fast break. Chavez down court, her shot's blocked out of bounds by Bowles. Now Cleppy to return to the Dowling lineup. Lincoln will check in Janae Winter as Lexi Bowles will check out for Dowling, and Malasia Chavez checks out for Lincoln. Rails inbound the own basket. And now the inbounds pass is partially blocked by Kleppy and into the hands of Friedrich. Now down court, the Maroons go. Here's Anderson for three. It's no good. Might have been blocked. From the right wing. And Lincoln now with the rebound. They get down court. Now they finally get control of the basketball. Taylor with it. Over to Amua. Now left wing over to Canada. On the baseline for Lincoln. To Sims. Over to Canada, 99-10 to 10 with three minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. Here's Taylor with it. Dowling stays man-to-man, and Lincoln now has an attempt to shot. They will in the baseline. It's no good by Sims, and the rebound out to Dowling. Friedrich with it. Down court to Anderson. Anderson on the baseline. Her shot no good. Inside position is Bailey on the weak side. To the right block, and now she kicks it back out. A long three coming. It's up and good by Lauren Fredericks. Fredericks with a Tumi and Sons three pointer. That's her seventh point. And it's 102 to 10, Dowling. Final two and a half minutes of the contest. So the Beavers are trying to get uh, an update from Sioux City to see what's going on with Roosevelt and Sioux City East. Sioux City East leads Roosevelt 41 36. At the end of three quarters. So Sioux City East led at halftime, and now they lead at the end of three quarters by five, and we'll keep you posted. Two minutes remaining, and Lincoln with the basketball. Rails will have all sophomores and one freshman in this, uh, or four, excuse me, four sophomores and two freshmen in this lineup tonight. Now on the baseline, a shot no good by Winter. Rebound comes out to Lincoln. They leave it for Amua. Now over to Canada. Pull-up jumper, Canada, 10 feet, no good. Rebound, Dowling. Friedrich has it. Julia, down court. They get it all the way down to Kleppi, and her shot to the left hand, good on the fast break. Kleppi with her sixth point tonight, 104-10. Dowling with the lead, a minute and a half remaining. So Steve Devaney will be Tuesday night, regional final. We don't have to go to Cedar Falls this time. We're going to be right here in Des Moines. As Lincoln with the shot in the lane. It's no good by Taylor and rebound Dowling. Dribbling in the front court is Lauren Fredericks. Coming up on a minute to play, and this will mercifully come to an end, Mark. A whistle and a foul called on Lincoln. Only the fourth team foul, I think, so. That's Taylor's fourth foul. Clock will continue to run. So Lincoln's done this without having anybody foul out to yep. this juncture. One minute remaining. Jada Taylor picked up her fourth foul. Jane A. Winter had her fourth foul earlier in the half. 
Runes inbound the ball, and the ball is now deflected and like a ping-pong ball out of bounds to Lincoln as Kleppy touched it. And she was battling Saley Sims for it right there, and Sims will throw it in for Lincoln with 30 seconds remaining. So we hope to have a final from Sioux City. We may not with the running clock yeah. here. We're obviously far ahead of their game in Sioux City, but Dowling will face the winner of Roosevelt and Sioux City East being played tonight in Sioux City. Ball goes out of bounds, doesn't stop the clock with 15 seconds remaining. Lincoln will inbound it. Rails, Jada Taylor throwing it in. Almost a five-second count. Now finally leaves it for Chavez underneath. Her shot is blocked from behind, and that will do it as the clock strikes zero. 104-10 is our final tonight. More importantly, Dowling advances to the regional final for another year. This time they'll be home, and they'll take on either Des Moines Roosevelt or Sioux City East, and we'll see how that all transpired as Dowling outscored Lincoln 14-2 in that fourth quarter to win it, 104-10 here at the Dowling Gym. Alongside Steve Devaney, I'm Mark Amadale. We want to thank uh, Brady Grimm for our stu- being our studio producer tonight. Brady does a great job back at the Iowa Catholic Radio Studios. We'll take a break and come back with our postgame show, Dowling 104 Lincoln 10 here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio's broadcast of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities is provided by Kemen, a global ingredient manufacturer using science to transform the quality of life for 80% of the world. Kemen is on the leading edge of molecular science, manufacturing more than 500 specialty ingredients for the human and animal health and nutrition, pet food, aquaculture, nutraceutical, food technologies, crop technologies, and textile industries. Kemen strives to sustainably transform the quality of life every day for 80% of the world with their products and services. Kemen, using science to transform the world online at Kemen.com. Thank you to Mercy One for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. From the cardiovascular experts at the Iowa Heart Center to the pediatric services of Mercy Children's Hospital and Clinics. Mercy provides complete care for Central Iowa's adults and children with more than 50 primary care and specialty clinics in the Des Moines area. Find a convenient Mercy One location near you. Online at mercydesmoines.org. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym as Maroons winning their second round Class 5A regional semifinal game over Des Moines Lincoln. Final score, Dowling 104, Des Moines Lincoln 10. Maroons improved their record to 19-3 and on the season. They're ranked third in Class 5A. And Des Moines Lincoln closes out its uh, season with a record of 0-22 as the Rails now have dropped their 30th in a row dating back to last year. So tough going for Scott Harrison and the uh, Des Moines Lincoln Rails. We want to appreciate uh, him and his coaching staff, Joe Graziano and uh, Aaron Hole, for helping us out with our broadcast tonight. Appreciate all they do and uh, all our opposing coaches do when they come in and uh, either come into the Dowling Gym or we go on the road. All have been very helpful and uh, appreciate all the athletic directors and coaches throughout the year. And the Maroons will move on, and that's what it's about. Steve Devinney, you know this in postseason. Your daughters went through it. It's survive and advance. The Maroons survived their first-round contest over Des Moines Lincoln, and they advanced to Tuesday night and a chance to punch their ticket to the state tournament the following week. Yeah, a uh, lot to look forward to on Tuesday. This is a tough game. You know, it's a, just a tough situation for both teams. Maroons had good sportsmanship, but they, uh, you know, it was just a – it wasn't a very equal matchup, let's put it that way. And uh, now you got to kind of kind of come back ready to play for a, a stronger opponent and – you know what's on the line. You know, I've heard a lot of coaches say in the past that, that the regional final, there's more pressure than the state tournament because you're just trying so hard to get there. Bob and Sharon, you say that all the time. Yeah. Bob and Sharon Hansen said that to me all every year. Yeah. It's always the, the toughest pressure. And, and the girls regional. probably put some pressure on themselves about that too. So, uh, But looking forward to Tuesday. And uh, regardless of the opponent, Sioux City East or Roosevelt, I'm sure the Maroon girls will be ready to go and the crowd will probably be pretty good. Is that a 7 o'clock start, Mark? 7 o'clock on yeah. Tuesday night. We'll be on there at 645 right here at the Dowling Gym. And we'll just wait for the winner. Obviously, Dowling's game tonight got done in just about an hour with the running clock. And I'm sure they're still playing in Sioux City with uh, Roosevelt trailing by 5 going into the fourth quarter to uh, Sioux City East. And uh, we'll see if we can get an update here. 
you know, 41 36 at the end of uh, three quarters of play that's the last update i have from sioux city so we'll see how that transpires obviously uh, you can go online the iowa girls uh, at athletic union and uh, find out all the scores tonight and there's a lot of games going on as, uh, as we found out and an opportunity for six ciml teams to yeah. make the state tournament and it, these aren't all top loaded with ciml teams some brackets only have one or two ciml teams in it but there is a chance for six out of the eight girls teams that go to state in class 5a six of them be from the ciml remember last year four from the central conference yeah. which is dowling's conference made it last year to state yeah no we've talked about it all year how strong the ciml is from top to bottom and we talked about earlier tonight, eight out of the 15, top 15 in the state are from the CIML. And uh, wouldn't surprise me if you get five or six representatives. And it should be up on the website of the Girls' Union, I would guess, by 7.30, 8 o'clock tonight for all those scores. Once all the scores uh, are in, they, they will be. Well, we'll take uh, our final break of the night and come back. We'll recap our scoring. Again, the Dowling Girls advance. They improved their record of 19-3, and three, uh, ranked third in Class 5A in the final rankings that came out. Dowling. 104, Des Moines Lincoln 10, and we'll recap scoring as the Maroons had five players in double figures tonight, and we'll do that when we return here on Iowa Catholic Radio to the Dowling Gym. Support for Dowling Catholic Sports is provided by Two Rivers Glass and Door, creating commercial glass and aluminum storefronts. Also serving your home needs by creating custom frameless shower doors, mirrors, glass tabletops, and specialty glass. Two Rivers Glass and Door, design, fabrication, and installation. 515-222-4860. Online at tworiversglass.com. Two Rivers Glass and Door, serving imaginations since 1992. Thank you to Tumi and Sons for your support of Dowling Catholic High School basketball. Tumi and Sons is an Italian family restaurant with old country authentic Italian food. Enjoy the local atmosphere where you may even spot a priest, politician, or even Willie Farrell. Take advantage of Tumi and Sons bocce ball court with the kids while enjoying Tumi's homemade bread, pasta, and real Italian homemade desserts. Tumi and Sons is located on Southeast First Street, just south of downtown Des Moines, and around the corner from Graziano Brothers. 515-282-7976. TumiandSons.net. And welcome back to the Dowling Gym. A quick night tonight as the Dowling girls advance with a 104 to 10 win over Des Moines Lincoln alongside Steve Devinney, Mark Amadale, and Steve. It's nothing like a regional final that'll be here uh, at Dowling on Tuesday night. We're awaiting the winner from Sioux City. It'll either be Sioux City East or Roosevelt. Last report, Sioux City East leading Roosevelt 41 to 36. Going into the fourth quarter, and obviously they're probably a good 10 or 15 minutes behind us as we had the running clock here at Dowling tonight with the one-sided win by the Maroons. But uh, nonetheless, it's about advancing, and Dowling's looking to do that uh, on Tuesday night, and they're just waiting for their opponent. Yeah, no, it's been a one heck of a year for the Maroons. Three losses, like you said, and uh, a lot on the line this, uh, this Tuesday. You've got six seniors, and uh, hopefully we can keep it going, uh, get down there to the well. And uh, once you get down there, anything can happen. You know, they've Maroons have gone uh, toe-to-toe with all the best competition. Uh, the current number one seed, you said, number one ranked team was Waukee. Correct. Maroons, in their only meeting with that team this year, won the game. And uh, so if you beat number one, you know that you can play with any of these teams. Uh, did they split with Johnston this year? They Maroons? did. Yeah. They lost on the last second shot yep. at Johnston right before the Christmas yep. break, and then they beat Johnston here. Lost to Southeast Polk. Who was the other loss for the Maroon Girls? I can't remember. Um, let's see here. They lost it, to Southeast it, Polk it, was the first loss, and they lost to Johnston before Christmas. Yeah. So Dowling had two losses. The third loss was the City High of Iowa City. That's right. By one. On Saturday, yeah, one or by, two. By yep. two-point two yep. loss on the road. O- over at uh, City, City High. City High, yep. yep. That was back on February 1st. Yeah. Earlier this that's month. That's a, a great season for the Maroons. I mean, you... You've got three losses, all the top five teams. And so it would be nice to keep this thing going, wouldn't it? It certainly would. And tonight, uh, obviously, the lopsided score. Let's take a look at the scoring tonight. And quickly for Des Moines-Lincoln, uh, rail splitters dressed six players tonight. They had uh, injuries and uh, other things happened, so only six made the trip over from the Des Moines south side. Rails were led by uh, Janae Winter with three points and off the bench, Kara Canada with three points. And both of those young ladies are freshmen for the rails. Uh, two points each for sophomores Jada Taylor and for uh, Mal- Malasia Chavez. And uh, Saley Sims and CeCe Amunia did not score for Lincoln. So uh, Canada and Winter leading the way for Lincoln with three points each. Rails went 0 for 4 at the free throw line tonight. And for Dowling, we mentioned before the break, 
Dowling had five players in double figures, led by Caitlin Clark, 21 points, and she did not play well. She played one maybe possession of the second half. She had 21 points all in the first half. Uh, 13 points for Meg Simplot off the bench for Dowling. Nai Tong off the bench with 12 points as uh, Aaron Kleppe got the start in the post tonight as Nai Tong and Lexi Bowles came off the bench, but Nai with 12 points. And then uh, 11 points for Grace Gaber, 10 points for Emma Gipple, and then rounding out scoring, single-digit scoring, uh, Julia Moore with eight points, the freshman for the Maroons, seven points for Lauren Frericks, another freshman for Dowling, uh, four points for Lexi Bowles, six points for Brianna Rodriguez, three points for Ella McVeigh, and two points for Maddie Wishman uh, as the Maroons went 10 of 18 at the free throw line. And Dowling wins it 104 to 10. The Maroons improve their record to 19 and 3 on the season. Lincoln falls to 0 and 22. Uh, we'll recap the quarter, the quarter scores. Dowling jumped out to a 28 nothing lead at the end of the first quarter. The Maroons outscore Lincoln 32 to 5 in the second quarter. Dowling led 60 to 5 at halftime. Lincoln's first basket came at the 235 mark of the second quarter on a field goal by Malasia Chavez. And then the third quarter, the Maroons outscore Lincoln 30 to 3. They lead 90 to 8 going into the fourth quarter, and the Maroons outscore Lincoln 14 to 2 in the fourth quarter to win it 104 to 10. So. Mr. Devenny, that wraps up the scoring. We talk about the matchups tonight. Uh, we know it'll be Dowling taking on either Roosevelt or Sioux City East on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock here at the Dowling Gym. We'll be on the air at 645. Other regions going on tonight, Marshalltown is at Johnson. The winner of that game will face the winner of Ankeny and Council Bluffs Lincoln at the highest seat, which would be at Johnson on Tuesday. That's in Region 3. Region 4 has Fort Dodge at Waukee tonight, and the winner of that game will face the winner of Sioux City West at Ames going on right now. And that uh, will be at the highest seeded team, which right now in that region is Waukee. Region 5 has Linmar Marion traveling over to Southeast Polk tonight. The Rams come in with a record of 17 and 4 and a number 7 rating by the Girls Union. And uh, they'll take on the winner of the bottom bracket, which I think is tonight's best game Iowa City West at number 10 Valley. That going on right now. And the winners will meet at the highest seed, which right now would be Southeast Polk on Tuesday night. Region 6 has Dubuque Senior at Cedar Falls. Uh, the defending or the team that Dowling knocked off last year, uh, Cedar Falls, comes in ranked fifth and with a record of 17 and four. Indianola is at Indi- Ankeny Centennial. That's the bottom bracket, so uh, we could see a Centennial Cedar Falls matchup. And in Region Seven, the final CIML team, Cedar Rapids Jefferson, at Waterloo West, and Dr. Pappas, who's been there for ages up there, and he'll face the winner. Or they'll face the winner of the Atumwa at Urbandale game going on right now. On Tuesday night. So that's the matchups, an opportunity for six teams in Class 5A to make the state tournament. Don't forget Class 4A. We've seen uh, uh, Mason City. They play that rugged schedule. They come in with one game above 500, but they're the number two seed in their region in Class 4A. They're taking on Spencer right now, and the winner of that game will face uh, number four Ballard or Boone. Those two teams playing right now. And if that's the case, Mason City at, at Ballard could be a, a good matchup on Tuesday night. So there's yeah. a look at the matchups before we. Uh, say goodbye for one final time on this uh, great Saturday at a Catholic Men's Conference downtown at the uh, at the hotel in downtown Des Moines Embassy Suites. They did a great job hosting, and uh, that was a lot of fun. It was the uh, Sons of the Father con- uh, uh, conference, and uh, Matt Campbell was a speaker. Did, did you listen great... to Coach? Campbell? I did. Yeah. He did a great job. Good, super job, and uh, uh, God bless him for getting up there. We were expecting, oh, maybe around 600 uh, men to show up. 700 and plus and counting came into that. And we just had a tremendous turnout. Our thanks to people behind the scenes uh, of Iowa Catholic Radio. Bella Chase. Bell did a great job with Tony Calumet, Jimmy Olson. Uh, too many to mention. John Leonetti was our, our MC. Joe Stopulis, who has a show on it. A lot of folks uh, there today. We saw a lot of people. A lot of them love and enjoy, enjoy the uh, broadcast, so we, we had a lot of fun with that and uh, looking forward to the next men's conference. But that was held today, so it's been a long day, and we get to culminate it now with a, a Dowling win, and the Bruins will move on to Tuesday night. Mr. Devaney, any final thoughts? Anything you want to you want to apologize to Tom Donahue? I know he's listening. Gosh. He's watching track because he's keeping track of a, a couple of uh, Dowling tracksters. Uh, yeah. At least that's what his uh, Twitter feed is alluded well, to. But the anything bo- you want to say? Bo- the bottom line is this. Tom Donahue has been either a student here or coaching here for a considerable amount of time. Mm-hmm. He's, have- a, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's a selfless individual. He's 
and he's not coaching. He's taking Wait pictures a, of the other athletes. And, Wait a second. Who's counting the ballots? How do you know well, he's the first ballot Hall of Famer? That's a good point. <laughs> I don't know who's counting ballots. He might have been part of that steroid issue. He might he might be blocked we from We did have some fame, issues but, with that yeah. in the uh, Central Iowa area during Tom's time. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying anything negative about no, Tom, but he was no. around some of those characters. So no, but, but joking, a good yeah, point. Yeah, joking aside, though, the Maroons had a good tune-up tonight, <laughs> and uh, they allowed uh, the, the, the score of the game and, and the one-sided nature – Gave all the kids that have put in all the work all season that don't typically get to play that much. That is true. Some good minutes. And uh, as you can see, the Lincoln girls uh, coming out of the locker room one by one. There's some dejection and, and a little bit of uh, a little bit of sadness on the part of those girls. It's been a rough season for them. And, and uh, as I said earlier, credit to those kids for sticking with it, uh, the ones who stuck around to the end. And they kind of, in their own mind, probably knew what the outcome was going to be tonight. But... Uh, Give those kids credit for playing hard to the final buzzer, and uh, let's hope that they get things turned around a little bit over there in that program too. Absolutely. And, uh, Steve, before I let you go, I know you're part of the uh, Catholic Basketball uh, League, and uh, your kids that are in that league, uh, the 7th and 8th graders, the future Dowling Maroons, were introduced before the Southeast Polk game Thursday night. Yeah. You also kept score during that game. You the official score during the varsity game. But uh, congratulations to them. I know you uh, you guys are involved in some tournaments here, not yeah. only to today, guys, appreciate your time, but also last week. Yeah, I think we had 33 kids on the roster this year for the the 8th uh, grade MBA, Maroon Basketball Association boys. And they, uh, boy, they had a, a good a good season. We're finishing up with the final tournament this weekend at, those kids are playing hard down to the final buzzer, too. But uh, a couple of those kids that we have in eighth grade have sisters out here. Uh, Frerichs, mm-hmm. uh, the ninth grader Lauren, has an eighth grade brother Nick. And uh, the senior Aaron Kleppe has a ni- or an eighth grade brother named Ryan. And uh, so we're trying to keep it all in the family as, as time moves on here for the Maroons. Well, thanks for all your work and the coaches that assist you with uh, – uh, the, the basketball league and uh, here at Dowling and uh, the feeder program. That is very important to any program, as you know, and uh, it's been going on here a long time. Appreciate all your work and time and uh, looking forward to updates. You can give us some more updates on Tuesday when we're back together for the next next time but as Dowling will host a regional final. And I keep uh, flipping the page here and nothing. Roosevelt and uh, Sioux City East. Uh, let's see the last report. Yep. Forty-one thirty-six. Roosevelt with yeah. the lead right now. I, I heard one of the parents over here yep. uh, talking to Coach Meyer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they're em, also em, Emma Gipple's uh, dad. I think she said that Roosevelt might have been leading by one with a minute to go. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, oh, here uh, we go. Yeah. Uh, Roosevelt and Sioux City East tied at the end of regulation wow. at fifty-one. They're going overtime in Sioux City. So Incredible. Thought we'd have that before we go off the air tonight, but Steve, thank you for all you do, and we look forward to talking to you on Tuesday night, whether it's Sioux City East or Roosevelt. We'll be here against Dowling Tuesday yeah. night. We'll see you then. Yep. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I was just saying hi to yeah, Emma you... Gipple's brother, who also used to be an eighth grade NBA <laughs> player. Finished his career over here at Dowling in track and cross country, but uh, Michael Gipple. Oh. Anyhow, let's go get him uh, Tuesday, 7 right. o'clock, and uh, Hope the Maroons can get back down to state. Sounds good, my friend. Thank you. Steve Devinney, my broadcast partner tonight, and that will wrap up our broadcast here on Iowa Catholic Radio. I want to thank everybody involved with our broadcast. Again, if you joined us uh, late, uh, Sioux City East and Des Moines Roosevelt, the winner of that game will be Dowling's next opponent this Tuesday night. will be on the air at 645. But right now, those two teams going in overtime, tied at 51. Roosevelt uh, had the lead there in the fourth quarter, apparently, and uh, now it is tied. So, uh, we will be here Tuesday night for the call. Our thanks to Dr. Dan Ryan, the president of Dowling Catholic High School. Uh, also, Father Ryan Andrew, who is the uh, chaplain here at Dowling. I want to thank them for all they do. Tonight's studio producer on Iowa Catholic Radio is the one and only Brady Grimm. And our thanks to him, the executive director of Iowa Catholic Radio, who headed up the uh, uh, 2020 uh, Iowa Catholic Men's Conference. That was Tony Calumet. He and his staff do a great job. We appreciate all their work. People behind the scenes like Jimmy Olson, Bell Chase, Brian Sweeney, Mike Donner, Maddie Maher, um, all those folks, including our IT guy, Mr. Greg Richwine. We appreciate all they do behind the scenes of Iowa Catholic Radio and their support. We also want to thank our business underwriters and supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio. They've been with us throughout the season, including our three-point sponsor, To Me and Sons, along with Ashworth Vision Clinic, Construction Professionals, Dental Associates, Kemen. Our thanks also to R&R Realty Group, 
Catholic Tuition Organization, Two Rivers Glass and Door, and Mercy One. I'd like to thank the folks from Des Moines Lincoln, Athletic Director Phil Chia and his staff, Roberta Nigro and Heidi Evans, and head coach, head girls basketball coach at Lincoln, Scott Harrison, and his staff at Joe Graziano, and uh, all the fine folks there at uh, Lincoln for helping us prepare for our broadcast tonight. Uh, Aaron Hull is the third uh, assistant coach. We thank them for all they do. Our next broadcast here on Iowa Catholic Radio will be this coming Tuesday night, February 25th, high school girls class 5A regional final, and that will be the Roosevelt Sioux City East taking on Dowling. We'll be live from the Dowling Gym, 645 pregame tip-off at 7 o'clock. And a reminder, the Dowling boys will be in sub-state uh, semifinal action on Friday of next week, and they will host uh, a game here at Dowling against the winner of the Lewis Central and Council Bluffs uh, Jefferson game that'll be held on Monday so that'll be Tuesday night we're here for the girls contest again the final score for the final time tonight Dowling defeats uh, Des Moines Lincoln 104 to 10 the Maroons improve their record to 19 and 3 on the season and the Maroons have now won 13 of the last 14 games again for our studio producer Brady Grimm for my broadcast partner uh, Steve Devaney I'm Mark Amadale thanks for joining us tonight here on Iowa Catholic Radio we'll talk to you Tuesday night at 645 with our pregame until then have a safe and blessed faith-filled evening our coverage of Dowling Catholic High School basketball is underwritten by Ashworth Vision Clinic, the Catholic Tuition Organization, Instruction Professionals, Dental Associates, Kemen, Mercy One, and Tamiya and Sons. Please support the businesses that underwrite Iowa Catholic Radio on 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, 94.5 FM, streaming at iowacatholicradio.com and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app. The proceeding has been a Dowling Catholic Sports presentation on Iowa Catholic Radio.